Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I am taking a look at Bitcoin and probably Theta as well. So stick around, but right now we see a Bitcoin pump at the moment. And one of the things I've been talking about going back three weeks, actually it was right here. When we were up here, I said, look, we have a potential of Bitcoin forming a flat, which basically means an A, B, and a C. And then I basically said, hey, we could probably come down and backtest the bull market support band down in here or and or backtest this area here. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, right? I mean, obviously, it could still come back down, but I was hoping for the price to continue so that we can test it. But it looks like we got a bounce out of here. So here's the deal. Either number one, this ABC flat structure is over and we have a five wave move. If you zoom in here, let me zoom in, check this out. Important update today, by the way. How are you guys doing? Um, you know, we potentially might have a little diagonal here, which basically says one, two, three, four, five. A little five wave diagonal. Right, maybe it's not finished. Maybe we go up again, A, B, C, and then we continue higher, right? So, uh, and then we get back into those retracement levels. So this is the crash, this is the retracement, right? If it's gonna be a continued breakout, then great. If not, then we get into these retracement levels and then we continue down. Here's the thing. It could be an A, B, C. We finally backtest the bull market support band, finally backtest this, a proper backtest, and then continue higher. Or, right, there's a lot of different things. Or, you know, um, as we come back up, we can retrace and then come back down. Or we can come up and break out. So I, that, that's a little confusing. Let me do it one more time. Check this out. And I'm going to show you something that uh, I'm going to show you something. You'll see it right now. But before I do that, just real quick. Back up here, this was a flat. A, B, C. Now we can either, number one, continue rocking to the upside with obviously a pullback, then continue rocking. Number two, we come up into this retracement area, right? Then come back down back test the bull market support band and this area here a b c and then go or go into another retracement and then come down right so it really is tricky because you don't know if you're going to get past this retracement level if you don't then you come back down then you have another chance at breaking out if you don't you get back to this retracement level if you can't make it then you come back down even lower where would we go if we go lower? Well, most likely somewhere around this backtest area or even the bottom of this support, between 31 and 34, I would say. But right now the price is looking good. So I'm gonna show you this right here. Three weeks ago, we were up here and we were everybody was bullish, we were breaking out. Oh my God, it looks great. Let's go, let's go, you know? But this is what I said. Higher low, higher low, right? Higher low. We come out here, we take out the top. We come up here, we take out the top. And now that's it. We're done. We're going down. But that would actually be fine because what, what we would see here is a meetup of the bull market support band, right? So hopefully we have another chance. We can either backtest this high. We have Remember, we have a lot of support going down. So it doesn't mean it's over, it's over, right? We come down here. Back test the bull market support band, back test this area over here, and then continue rocking it to the upside. Or if it's going to be bearish, then we can continue going to the downside. So a lot of decisions will be made right in here. So there you go. That was um, one of the ideas. Obviously, that wasn't like the only idea. I had uh, several ideas. I didn't know that was going to happen, but that was one of the primary ideas 
that was a good potential of happening. And what do you know? That's what's happening. Unfortunately, like I said, we didn't quite come down to this back test. Well, I guess you did. Let me look here. Let's see. Let me put it right on top of this wick. I mean, it's it's honestly better if you get it, you know, down in here like a proper back test. But if I put it on the very top of this wick right about there, let's see. Yeah, we almost, almost got it. It was like a little bit of front running, right? People front run it. So I guess you can count it. Maybe, maybe not. Or like I said, back in that video I did three weeks ago, when we were sitting up here, we were extremely bullish. A lot of people were, let's go, you know, but I said, hey, be cautious here because this could be a flat. And to me, it, that's what it looked like, right? A flat usually is a down move, right? An A, a B, and then a sharp move down. And that sharp move down instantaneously changes people's perspective. It changes the sentiment. It gets everybody bearish. Oh my God, the ETF was a big failure. It's going down. That's it. No, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then what happens? You get a sharp impulse off the bottom. And that sharp impulse, I was worried that it could potentially be a three-way move. So one, two, three, right? But we actually got five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So my thinking here is, right, what's happening is we are retracing this down move, this, this dump right here that everybody, you know, sort of freaked out out. But I said, this is a good thing. We want it to happen. Why? Because we want to come down and test the bull market support band, really. We, and I believe that still potentially could happen at, you know, sooner or later. Or number two, back test this little range right here. And we came pretty close. We didn't technically hit it, but hey, it was pretty good. Right. So if I take a fib and I pull it down here, right about there, I mean, we're not even at the 50 percent yet. Right. So let me actually put a little rectangle right here. Somewhere right in there around the 618, you kind of want to see it hit. So what could potentially happen now is we have an A, B, C. Right. Or maybe we continue rocking it a little higher right or some type of move and then we have another one two three four five that would be great and then we can get into that retracement level but zooming out that my friends is only a three wave move so what you then have is an impulse to the downside and then a three wave pullback which then tells me number one here's the thing if we can break out of this then perfect then we're launching into our fifth wave and the fifth wave if you don't know would be this right here so this would be one two this would be three the flat would be four and then we get five is that going to happen well we don't know until we get through the retracement levels it's all about retracement levels that's the hardest thing to know that's why if people are trading right usually they wait for the breakout or or what have you but for now, um, just running a few ideas by by you here. Um, if we have an ABC, right, which I'm, you know, probably we will. We had a five way move, or at least some type of little little correction, right? And then we pump up again. The big question becomes: If we get here, do we break out or do we come down? That's the big question. And to me, if we come down, it's fine. It's fine. Why? Because then we can finally what? Let me take that off. We can finally, right? This is a flat A, B, C. If we come up and retrace, right? We can finally come down and what? Test the bull market support band. That's what I want to happen. And you say, why do you got to have that? Why, why is that important? Well, just look here. Let me go to the weekly chart. And here's Bitcoin right here. You can see all the times, right? 
So we broke above the bull market support band. Look at all that testing, testing, testing. Multiple weeks. Actually, it looks like several months of testing. Then again, right here, testing. And then we finally break out. Then then a wick, right? Then a another hit, right? Another hit, another hit, right? So to me, it's a very important thing. And then once the bull market was over, what happened? We broke below the bull market support bin. And then the important part is we came back up and we couldn't get back above it. In fact, we treated it as resistance, which now is not the bull market support band, but now it's the bear market resistance band. So then we come back down, come back up again. Resistance, come down, come back up again. Look at we barely got above it, but guess what? It was a fake out, right? Then what happened? We came down again, tested it again, couldn't get there, came down again, tried again, test, 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 test. Finally, just went boom, kaputs, right? And then we went and established our base. Remember, the base is important. Establish a range, establish a base, establish accumulation, support. Then what do you do? You break out. But look what happened here. We never tested the bull market support band when we broke out. And that can spell trouble because if you break out impulsively and don't come down to test, right, then what happens is it gets extended and people take profits. You can see these doji candles here. And then what happens? You basically go sideways until you hit it and then you break below. Then you come up, you test it as resistance you come back down, you go sideways again, and look at this. You actually break above it. But obviously, you know, you had that C19, you had that event, right? The Black Swan event, that massive liquidation event, which, you know, obviously took out everything. I mean, look at everything, the stock market, gold, right? Everything. Boom, went to the downside. Then, check this out. The bear market was officially over here. We broke above, we went sideways, we didn't quite test it. We pumped up again, we officially tested it a bunch of times. So test, test. So basically, uh, let's see, did we test it here? Let me see, no we didn't. I was seeing if we tested it right here, right here. So let me take all that off. Once again, very important, right? We broke above. We went sideways. We didn't test it, right? We pumped up, but the price, when it pumped up, it said, hey, wait a minute. What? What happened? I didn't get to test it. I didn't get to, to charge my batteries. Oh, okay. Let's come back. We'll back test this area here. And not only that, we'll back test this area, but we're also going to test it one, two, three weeks, right? While remaining bullishly above it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. Then Bitcoin says, okay, I'm ready. I had my, I had my uh, sports drink. Now I'm ready to run the marathon, right? So I continue to go, 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 go. But the thing is, is like back in 2017, it tested it. It tested it. It tested it. But here, Bitcoin never tested it. It only tested it that one time. So what happened was the price got overextended which then caused this massive distribution, right? Which then caused what? The price to come back over. But here's where the trickery occurred. People were not convinced that it was over. So what happened? The market makers, they decided, you know what? Let's give the people what they want. Let's, let's continue the narrative that that's going to continue going. So what happened was we broke above. We actually back tested it. And then we continued higher as it was gonna, as if it was gonna continue. But what happened was it was just a one, two, three. It was a three wave move, right? And it actually took out the top. It grabbed that liquidity and then it came down, it tested it as resistance, came down, resistance, right? And then it continued to crash. Where then it went sideways, established a base. Tried to get above. Nope, not ready yet. Came back down. 
established another base, and now you have divergence from this wave and this wave. Then you broke up, then you back tested it. You continued on, back tested it again, right? So to me, the bull market support band is extremely important. Now, if you look at the weekly chart, what do you see? You see the price clearly above the bull market support band. It hasn't even tested it yet. So I'm not sure why everybody's so incredibly bearish. Now, the fact that you could be bearish, and I've mentioned this idea before, is that it hit its retracement levels. Bitcoin is officially at the one point at the 618, right? So it hit the 618. It rejected strongly off of it. So that is an indication that it could be over with. Now, the big thing is, is it truly over or or is Bitcoin going to consolidate and range and accumulate and then we can continue breaking out? Right. So just like right here, we come back down. Right. Same thing. We hit the one six one eight. We rejected strongly. So what it was, what was it? It was a rise crash retrace to the 618 come back down reaccumulation then blast off so that could be what's happening now we just don't know until we get you know more confirmation and at the moment you can see let me go back and zoom in well before i do that you can see this you can see this uh this bullish hammer candle right so last week this was last week's candle, and it printed pretty beautifully. It printed in a bullish hammer type of way. Now, the question is, are we going to get follow through? Are we going to get through the short uh, time frame uh, uh, retracement levels? So let me get so let me get rid of that. So again, like my video I showed at the beginning that I did three weeks ago, uh, one of the ideas when we were up here was that this could be an A, B, C, and it looks to be like that. The question is, is C finished? Or could this be some type of fourth wave? Well, to me, it's looking pretty big to be a fourth wave. If we take out this right here, this high right here, then I'm not going to say uh then that fourth wave becomes in invalidated but for now you can have like a one two this could be three now we're going up for four and then right so one two this is three this is four and then we get five and that's when we meet the bull market support man that could be very well a another way you can look at it again right like I've said before here, is you can, you know, maybe get a little higher, have a little A, B, C. Con contingent on this is a diagonal. So one, two, three, four, five. You have a little A, B, C. And then you go one, two, three, four, five. And you get back up here in the retracement levels. So that could be an idea too. Now, if that's the idea, so it's always ideas based off if this, then this. If this happens, then this happens, right? So if this occurs, where we have this little diagonal, this A, B, C, and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we get into a higher retracement level, right, around that 618, 47K, 46, 47K area, or actually, let me see what that was again, real quick. Uh, let me pull the fib on that from this wick here, down here. Okay, so about 44 to 45. So if we can get up to 44, 45, then the question becomes, number one, are we going to come back down to finally test the bull market support band, number one, or, or are we going to continue breaking out? My bet would probably be we're going to come back down. The question becomes at that point, if we come back down. So now we're so we're at one step ahead, two step ahead, three step ahead. So that's what I like to do. I like to look at, you know, you have ideas for one steps. Then you have ideas for two steps ahead. Then you have different ideas for three steps ahead, right? So at that point, if we get this diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, this ABC pullback, 
right? A continuation, then this could be what? An A, B, C, right? So let me actually, let me actually put some drawings or some annotations on it so we can have more of a visual idea. So one, two, three. I mean, this could be four, but it would break the high or it can come down here and then come down to five. Now you can say that, right? Or let me take that off. If that's not the case, we have some type of three-way move, right? Um, I mean, I guess you can count it as five. One, two, three, four, five. And this would be A, B, C. And then, or better yet, the whole thing, right, would be A, B, and C. Now, C can come even further down, right? And at that point, C would come further down. And then the risk becomes, here's the bull market support, but coming back up to test it as resistance and then continuing to go down. But if that's the case, then what is happening here probably is a big diagonal. So you have a one, two, three, four, five, right? Which would then either, you know, or like a falling wedge, maybe something like that, where we come back up to the top and then continue down. But that's just getting way, that's just like saying, okay, that's getting way too ahead of ourselves. But, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's good to think out loud to see, um, you know, what makes sense, right? So if this occurs and we come back and retest it as resistance and can't get above it and then continue down, to me, you'd have a pullback and then a continuation down until we back test, which I've thought for the longest time, at some point, we will eventually, most likely, come back down to back test this area. So let me just put a a range here this is our this is our accumulation base or a sideways you know accumulation base we broke out of the base the big question becomes number one are we going to test the bull market support band if we fail it number two are we going to get back down to back test this area right so to me i think eventually we will test the bull market support band we will come back down and back test this area and that, my friends, let me take everything off, will allow Bitcoin to start establishing a new base, a new range. Now, it could be a reaccumulation range, right? Or some type of distribution range, right? So is it going to be like a reaccumulation like this and even like this down here? So here's your first accumulation range you mark up go sideways mark up again right then you do another one or is this the final one and this is distribution so for example um i've showed this before but just in case you're uh, new here same thing kind of like what happened during this 2014 through 2017 type of uh situation where you have your bottom right accumulation you mark up you go sideways another accumulation you mark up you go sideways another accumulation so what happened on this third accumulation well look what happened you broke all the way up and then look what happened you came all the way back down to test the bull market support band the key was the big 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 key was the bull market support band held the price you pumped up, it held it again. It pumped up, it held it again. And then it continued pumping to the upside. So that's the key. That's what I'm going to be looking for here. Now, the cool thing about this was not only did it backtest the bull market support band, but you could see this long wick right here. It actually also backtested this base right here, which is also important. So you got a two for one deal here. So um let me zoom out and you can see 
the two different areas. So look at this area, look at this area. Is that what's happening? Well, it could be, but we need confirmation, of course. Like I said, the bull market support band. So if I zoom in again, and for the record, uh, you know, going to the comments on my previous video, a little ruffled, a little feathers, but that's okay. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Um, you know, if you're not doing that, then you're not doing your job, right? No, but no, seriously. Uh, if in fact we can hold this area, right? So just like before. So here's your the top of your range right here. If in fact this would be like the best case scenario. So we come down. Uh, let me make it a little bigger here. Okay. So we come down like an A, B, and then a C. In the C wave, we hold the bull market support band, but then also we wick, like just like before, we wick down here and also back test this, right? If we can wick off of it and then the wick tested it, but the bodies of the candles remain, you know, above the bull market support pan. So just kind of like, again, going back over here, where you see this wick right here, this wick right here, basically back tested this range, but then also the bodies of the candle held the bull market support band. To me, that would be like the best case scenario, right? So just again, running ideas, not telling you zigzag or whatever, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but something's going to happen. And let's talk about the, the possibilities of what that could be. So if and when it does, or if and when it doesn't, we can always be prepared. We, we know what's going on, right? So that would be the case, right? If this is another accumulation range where, you know, you have your bear market accumulation, breakout, accumulation, breakout, accumulation, and then you continue breaking out, right? That, that would be the idea. Now, if this is not accumulation, if this is rather distribution, then you still want to see, um, take everything off. You still want to see Bitcoin hold, not necessarily above the band, but above this high, above 31, 30K. So in other words, you would have the top of the range here coming back down to the bottom. So what that would look like, right, potentially, is something like this, where you have one, two, three, four, and then five. Basically, that would be impulsing to the downside. But that impulse wouldn't just, you know, it would, it would cause panic and everybody would be like, you know, it, it's over with. But in reality... It's just finding its support before it rallies. So basically, it'll be like in a range. So as you come down here, then you're going to come back up, right? Probably something like this, where you come back up here, and then you come back down, come back up, right? You're basically coming up, down, up, down. You're oscillating up, oscillating down. And the thinking to me here is, if altcoins want to have a chance, if altcoins want to have that final oorah, which I believe at some point, like looking at theta, and I'm going to get into theta, right? And again, like going back to the comments, it's impossible for me to do a 10 minute video. I don't know how people do it. I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I mean, because there's just so much information, I'd be doing you a great disservice. Remember when you're in um, high school, and you went to first period, you went to second period. Now, you, let's say you're in third period and you're at math class. Is math class an hour long or is math class 10 minutes long? <laughs> kind of opened your eyes a little bit. Now, I'm not saying this is a class. I'm not saying, you know, but it is entertainment. I, it's not financial advice. Again, I could be totally dead wrong. I don't have a degree, a fancy degree, right? I'm not a teacher, but... At the same time, I'm doing a video based off my perspective of how I see the market. 
and doing it in a 10 minute video, I mean, I guess it's possible, but I have to be talking a million miles an hour and, you know, just going one idea, two idea. But for me, it's more like, let's hash it out, you know, but okay. But aside from that, I try my best to get the information out as, as quickly as possible. I know people have things they got to do and, and whatnot, but you know, at the same time, this is your investment, you know, you want to take it serious. And not just hear what I have to say, but I would like to know what you have to say and what this person and that person and this person. That way I can get all the information of everybody who has their opinions and then I can formulate my own opinion. And that's sort of what this is all about, or at least for me. So again, going back to Bitcoin, but first, real quick, Theta. I've always said, I believe at some point, Theta is going to get back into its retracement levels. Now, how is it possible if, like I said, how does Theta get back up here if Bitcoin is in distribution? Well, I guess it could be possible, right? And I think it is possible. Obviously, the better idea here would be that this is, right, um another accumulation range just like this and we continue marching our way out or if this is a distribution range we oscillate to the downside right we're going down obviously but it, when we oscillate back to the upside that's when we can get these big moves and i've talked about this before right you could see look at this look at theta i mean just look at this number one you have a beautiful base. Number two, you have an incredible bull market, massive pump. Number three, you have an orderly and constructive bear market. Number four, you have another base, a big base. Number five, you have accumulation in that base. Number six, you have another, a miniature accumulation, which by the way was my first video back in October. Then you have a pump to the upside. You have an impulse to the upside. Not only that, you have a back test of the bull market support band. So everything, the stars are lining up perfect. I couldn't ask for anything more perfect for the price of theta. But the thing is, Bitcoin has to show up to the party, right? It has to show up to the party. So that's why it's, it's difficult, you know, with crypto, because if you like cardano and matic and solana and, or, and theta like pretend those are your favorites not only you have to chart those but you also have to have confluence with bitcoin and not only that you also have to have confluence with the stock market and the dollar so you have to know all the things that are happening with those charts alongside your chart because those are dependent on those remaining healthy right they don't have to be ripping to the upside they have to be in a healthy area because of sentiment right and now people say well then what's the point of holding an altcoin if you always have to depend on bitcoin well because we are the early adopters we are the pioneers without us without uh, our confidence without our conviction without us holding on to the asset you know with confidence that it's going to continue to grow then there's nothing. It's just like the US dollar. The only reason it works is because of confidence. I have confidence in what I hold because I'm holding a utility based um, token or that's on a um, utility based blockchain that's doing real things for real people in a good way. But utility, right, doesn't, you know, dictate the price because we don't have regulations yet. We need regulation so that we can get US companies and US business to implement and, and merge the, the old system into the new system, right? And especially the investors like BlackRock and their clients, their wealthy billionaire clients, right? But, how, but what do they do instead? They distract us with a Bitcoin ETF. And I'm very upset at the Bitcoin maxis that claim to be in the space for years and years and years and years and years and years. 
But if they knew better, they wouldn't be so enthusiastic about an ETF. Yes, it's a good thing, right? It gives attention. But we don't want that. We want real regulation so that we can get real adoption. And that way, utility can drive the market. Maybe the reason Bitcoin Maxis weren't so thrilled or, or, or extremely thrilled about the Bitcoin ETF rather than somewhat concerned is because they know potentially if we do get massive regulation and we do get institutional, then it's going to be a utility based market, not a speculative based market. And Bitcoin thrives in a speculative market. We don't know how it's going to do in a utility based market, even though I believe Bitcoin will be around for a long time, very, very long time. A lot of people think, oh, it's, it, you know, it's going to go down. It's not going to be. I think it's going to be around a long time. I look at Bitcoin like a 1950s Ferrari. It's not the fastest car, right? You don't drive it every day, right? Now, I look at Theta like an 18-wheeler. I look at XRP like an 18-wheeler. You drive it a long time. It's actually doing something. It's not just sitting in the garage collecting dust, right? It, you know, it might not be the shiniest coin out there, but it serves a purpose, right? So does Bitcoin. It, it serves a purpose, right? Just like gold. But again, don't want to get all into that. I try to have my videos, you know, 80, 90 percent technical analysis. But then also I go off on the rest of the 10 percent, right, to help uh, fill in the gaps of my opinion of what I think is happening outside of the chart. And basically, that's very important because that will also dictate how the price thrives in the future. So, okay. So, like I said, Theta is in a perfect spot for a backtest, right? So, we look at this. I've been talking about it for probably for weeks now. I don't know. I've said, look, we have a flat. A, B, C. I want to see it come down, hit the, uh, you know, when we were up here, I want to see it come back down, hit the bull market support band. We came down, we missed it, but then we continued hitting down. So now we tested it. And now look, look at this. We tested it once, twice, three, four, five, six. We tested it six daily candles in a row or not in a row, but um, in the same vicinity, right? And then what happened? And now we're getting a pump off of it. That is a good thing. That's what we want. Now, the question is, does this pump turn into something bigger? We don't know. We have to wait until it clears the retracement levels. Let's pull up the retracement levels right here. We'll pull that down here. Right now, we're not even at the 382. We're still in, we're still in no man's land, right? So we still have to get up to at least another 25% to clear the 702, but um, the 618 would be around 20%. So is it going to just continue going up in a straight line? No, of course not. We can see like, you know, what we had with Bitcoin. We go up a little bit, maybe pull back down. Maybe we come and test it again. So here's the bull market support band. We come up, maybe we test it again. We come up again, maybe we test it again. That would actually be very bullish. You know why? Because that would be a one, two, one two right um obviously you can come down test it then continue higher come back down continue higher the, the point is we want to get back up into the retracement levels the retracement levels and then from there do we get rejected right so let me take everything off the screen i would say right about there do we get rejected and come back down? If we do, that's fine because then we can test it again. The more times we test it, the better. We just want to stay above it, right? So if Bitcoin, and again, it's very complex. And I think, you know, that's why these videos are longer than most is because not, you know, not only I'm going over the altcoin, but I'm trying to correlate that or to, I'm trying to have confluence with the Bitcoin chart. But if you don't know what Bitcoin's going to do, then what's the point, right? That's why I'm running through these mental exercises to see 
you know, what makes the most sense to you, right? Because that's what it's about. That's why I'm doing these videos. I'm doing it for people who want this information. Um, and, you know, me providing one idea, two ideas, three ideas, that's better than me saying this is exactly what's going to happen because nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows, right? So, anyways, I think, and if you want to know what I think, right, those are the ideas, but if you want to know what I think is going to happen, I think eventually Theta, right, is going to break out. The question is the timing of it. Right. That's the big question is the timing. I think Theta will break out. Um, and I don't know if it's going to do something like this, because remember. Wyckoff accumulation, right? Something like this and then we break out. Or something like this, then we break out. Or we come back up, we come all the way back down, we back test this area. Down in here. Worst case scenario, we back test 60, 70 cents. I think that's about, what is that? 60, the upper 60s. Let's just say that. The upper 60s. That would be our last line of defense, though. Is this little range in here. You can see here. This little range right here was a miniature Wyckoff accumulation range. We broke out of that range. It is entirely possible to come back down to back test that range. If that occurs, we would obviously lose the bull market support band, but also it wouldn't be the end of the world because you would have the band sort of coming back down, right? You would have the price come down, then you would have the price come back up, then the band starts to come up. So they're kind of like intertwining with each other. That's sometimes a really good thing because that establishes another base for a bigger pump to the upside. At the end of the day, I believe Theta is going to break out. I just don't know how exactly. But again, if I had to guess, we're either going to backtest this area. Hopefully not, right? Or backtest this area. Now, we sort of already backtested uh, this area, but not quite. So let me just put two lines here. One there. And one there. And that's how much wiggle room uh, theta has. So that's how much room we have. So not only theta is above the bull market support band, but it's also above these two support lines, which is incredible. So I've often stated that this is potentially a Wyckoff accumulation zone. So basically that right there, been talking about that for months. And I'm thinking now, right? We're right here. So we can do something like this and then continue higher just like right there. And that's that's my main idea. That's what I'm thinking of right now is something like something like this, right? Where once again, right? Yeah, this move to the resistance, move to the resistance. You come back down, take out the low, right? Come back down, take out the low. You come back up, right, without taking out this high. You come back up without taking this high. Then you spring all the way down. It's waning, 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 waning down, right? Same thing here. Spring all the way down. What do you do? You take out this low. That's exactly what happened. You took out the low. You took out this low right here. And this little area in here was its own miniature Wyckoff accumulation. Now That's why I was double bullish. And then we had the impulse out of here. Same thing here. We have the impulse out of here, and now we're sort of consolidating at and around these um, resistance levels. Now, ideally, you sort of want the um, you sort of want the consolidation to be above this in an idealistic world. But as to to me, as long as it's above the bull market support band, that's what counts. And then not only that, that's actually kind of bullish because if you look closely, like I've been talking about, you can you can start to see a 
beautiful shoulder, head, right? And you have another shoulder. So what is that? An inverse head and shoulders. So if I were just to take a measured move of that inverse head and shoulders, right? Right about there. And I'll put it right about there. The target would be about $2.92, right? So that's my target. That is my target. Because if we curl out of here, that's my short-term target, by the way. If we start to curl out of here, which I believe is going to happen. Now, again, we can come down and back test this area, which would be a really deep shoulder. But as long as we don't take out this low, we're, we're, we're fine. So we got, if you're a theta hodler, we got a lot of wiggle room. We're in a good position. The only minor concern is Bitcoin because we don't really know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. But even if Bitcoin decides to uh, back test this area or why even entertain that when it hasn't even back tested the bull market support van yet so i say little minor problem with bitcoin but at the end of the day bitcoin's bullish why because it's above its support and it's above its bull market support van now that could change rapidly but until then right we'll, we'll wait and see and as of now just a little recap, A, B, C, a flat, and then we continue higher. Or A, B, C, flat, right? Then we have this three-way move up. We come back down, right? If that's the case, it sort of wouldn't be a flat anymore. Um, it would just be a three-way move down, and then we can continue up. Now, when I say up, it doesn't mean we can break this high. We could just come up and range, come back down, range, right? We're just ranging in here just like how we ranged over here, right? Because we have been trending for a while to the upside, right? Trending, 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 trending. So it makes sense that we start ranging, 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 right? So how does the ranging look? Well, we have to wait until we get to the bottom of the range. Is it already at the bottom of the range? Maybe, maybe not. Or what if we're not even going to range yet? What if this, like I said, was a flat. We come down here. Then we break up, make that fifth wave, the fifth wave, right? And then we start to range. That is totally possible. And if that happens, guess what? I would be pleasantly surprised. I will be more than happy to be wrong, right? You know, because my main idea here is, is it for to range in some fashion. But if we come up in a fifth wave, that's perfect. That would be beautiful. And that would even make more sense in a way because that would allow what? Theta room to gallop, right? Think of theta. It's like a, it's like a racehorse. You can't put a racehorse in your backyard. I mean, I don't know how big your backyard is, but it definitely can't put a, a racehorse in my backyard. It's too small. A racehorse needs room to gallop. Right. So if Bitcoin gets that fifth rave, then it will surely have a lot of room to gallop. Right. And then what would that be entirely? Right. Well, it would obviously be a one, two. Right. You could say this is three, four, and then we're finishing up five. And in the fifth wave, you have five waves, which is one, two, three, four, five. So either. The fifth is already done and we're ranging in here or we come up even higher and range a little bit higher. But to me, I think the top is probably in just because we hit the 618, right? I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I want Bitcoin to continue higher. The better, it, the higher it goes, the better it is for Theta. So whatever Bitcoin decides to do, I am of the opinion that Theta is going to continue pumping to the upside because it too has the shape of a flat a b c the difference here to me is that this flat tested the bull market support band and it's coming off of this wyckoff accumulation range i don't have the example on my screen anymore but basically something like that right let me uh put this down here so 
you know, and then also, like I said, the inverse head and shoulders, right? So it's looking good. Now, what would be concerning to me? What would be concerning is if we come back up, come back down, bull market support bands here, we come up, we test it as resistance, then we come back down to back test this area, we come back up, and then we couldn't, still couldn't do it, right? And we broke down. If that happens, I'm thinking that. Because why? Why you ask? Because that would be a big fat bear trap. That would be a liquidity grab. Because you can see, right, if that happens, you can see how it's descending. It's you have this impulse to the upside, right? And then you're correcting, 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 correcting. And then you crash, and everybody's like, oh my god, it's over. Not only people are bearish here, like right, it's bearish, it's bearish, but to me it's corrective behavior. And if we do end up collapsing out of this sort of thing that I don't even know why I'm entertaining it, but I like to throw out ideas, you know, in case it happens, we can be aware. So if this occurs and we come down here, as it's, if it, you know, it's, it's waterfalling, not only, right, is it going down, it's driving people crazy and it's making you bearish, then you crash you take out this low, now everybody's extremely, extremely bearish. Everybody's shorting, everybody's selling. What happens when that happens? Liquidity. And what happens when that happens? People, smart money, take advantage, they absorb that liquidity, and that's when you get the monster, 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 monster move. And I mean monster move, right? Something like an A, B, and a C, right? An ending situation. Do I think that's going to happen? No, I don't think so. Now, is it possible it could happen? Yeah, but why entertain that idea if we're not even, not even anywhere near that possibility yet, right? So there's no point of even talking about it. So for now, um, what could potentially happen too is you can see this is a shoulder this is a head maybe we come up and we make another shoulder if that happens then obviously right you have a head and shoulders um i guess i could put the neckline here and say you know this is a shoulder a head right and now we're coming up for that shoulder or better yet the retracement we come up here right come back down then if that happens, what what could we see? Well, if I put this here, here, let's see what the measured move is. Somewhere down in here. That takes us down into the low 60s. Now, it's something you don't want to happen. Now, if that happens, hey, it is what it is. But for me, um, it would just be continuing this range right if we break below this range there is a big danger that it can continue down do i think that's going to happen no if it did happen i'm going to be very skeptical about it because i'm going to think it's probably a liquidity trap and then in which case the whole white cough accumulation just gets shifted over so instead of for example instead of this being the spring this could be the spring and that is the liquidity grab and then we impulse and continue higher right so basically worst case scenario everything gets shifted over so instead of this the spring this is the spring right um instead of this high it's this high right so man that would suck from a from a time perspective but you know we're in this like i said we're pioneers you know when you're pioneering across the united states in a crappy wagon it's going to take a long time to get from one state to another state to another state right but you got to do it because what other option you got right i don't see any asset on planet earth that has the potential of beating crypto as far as percentages right you have the stock market has been going up for decades and decades and decades and decades right depending on your age 
right? If you're between 20 and 40 years old, or even 50 years old, you know, it, it you got plenty of time, right? Um, so for me, I'm in my 30s, I got time. And I don't like I instill, you know, you have AI, right? You have DeFi, you have AI, you have sectors like that. But um, for me, um, they're still in their early stages, just like crypto. At least crypto is more further along, right? Um, like I said, we were still waiting for the regulations. But to end on a positive note. When you look at this chart, it is so simple. You have a base, you have an impulse, you have a correction, you have another base. So what does that mean? That means you have to go into a retracement at some point, right? So the decision becomes what happens there. Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, blast off is usually what happens or a continuation. So it's really about figuring out, hashing out this range in here. So I think the range is complete. Look at that, look at that impulse. On the five day chart, you could see this bullish engulfing candle. It's engulfing somewhat the previous candle. It's a good thing, but I digress. I think at the end of the day, you have this initial wave up, you have this correction down, you, you need another wave up. I, I just can't see it any other way. Now, if this wave turns into a retracement, we come back down, then you have a one A, B, C, and then up, whatever, right? At the end of the day, it, it still has the arrows pointing up. And if you're worried about Bitcoin, I'm really not too worried because Bitcoin, even if it's in a distribution range, it still has a lot of time. Look at that. The five-day candle is engulfing. It's engulfing this candle and this candle. Shoot, we may even freaking, like I said, have that fifth wave. One, two, three, four, five. We might have it. Because if you look at everybody's so bearish, everybody's looking at the 618, everybody's thinking, you know, it's over. Maybe it's not. Maybe, like I said, we have that fifth wave up, and that would be great. Let me go to the three-day chart. But before I do that, isn't this fun? Isn't this fun? Uh, let's go to the three-day chart. Let's go to the two-day chart. Let's, well, actually, let's go to the daily chart. Okay, look at, look what started it. The nine. Look at that. The nine started this kickoff. Now, you have these red dots up here, right? So that would be sort of the area of resistance, even up here. So what could we see? Well, look at this. Look at this real quick. If I go to the, let's go to the 10 hour chart. Uh, maybe, just maybe, you have a left shoulder ahead and now you're creating a right shoulder. What if that's the case? An inverse head and shoulders. Right? In which case, draw a line up there, take it, put it right about there, and that gets us back challenging the all-time highs. Well, not the all-time highs, but the, the local highs. Right? So that would be kind of interesting to see if we can get back up here. So again, a lot of things can happen. If I had to make a, my best educated, conservative, idealistic idea, it is this is some kind of retracement before we come back down because i really think we got to test it if we don't test it that's fine we can continue higher but let's see what happens in this retracement level we start getting rejected coming back down this can turn into a bigger three wave move and what i mean by that is something like this and i'm already going to go over an hour which is going to kill my algorithm. So if you guys would do me the favor and, and comment and like, even if it's a negative comment, hey, it helps the algorithm. I'm okay with it. I appreciate all feedback and I don't take anything the wrong way. 
I like people who tell it like it is and are blunt. Tell, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Don't worry. Just give me a comment. <laughs> but anyway, we can have a three-way move. So one, two, three, and then come back one, two, three. And that would be like a W, X, Y, right? And then come down. It can get very complex. You know, just look how complex this was. Nobody knew what was going on, right? When we came down in here, we had this falling wedge. We broke out. Yay, let's go. But then we came back and nobody understood what was going on. We were going sideways. It looked like it was a, maybe a head and shoulders, something like that. People were bearish, but then we went up. So it was all confusing. So we're still, you know, in the retracement levels of a range. But again, it can turn into something much more complex. But there you go. I, I, I'm going to end it there. I don't want to go too long. Um, let's wait and see what happens. Again, for Theta, uh, same thing. I mean, Theta looks even more bullish than Bitcoin. I mean, because if you look at Bitcoin, and I'm just going to end it right here. Let me go, like I've said before. Here's the all-time high. Here's the low. And Bitcoin is right in the middle. Right? It had a, a proper retracement. Now, if you look at Theta, it's all-time high. Here's its low. It needs to get back up here. Or at least it appears that has to happen, right? Same thing with Theta Fuel. Right? Here's your low. Here's your low. A beautiful base. Remember, remember Chainlink, right? Here's a good example. Check this out. And you got to bear with me here. Look at Chainlink right here. Same thing would happen. If Chainlink can do it, why not Theta Fuel and Theta? Look at this. We had a range. Everybody, Nobody knew what was happening. Then boom, we broke out of the range. Now look at here. Here's the top. Here's the bottom. Theta made it to its proper retracement levels. So take a mental screenshot of that. And boom, here's Theta Fuel. Look at Theta Fuel. Same thing. It looks just like Chainlink, right? Where Chainlink came up here, it came back down. Boom, we get back up here. So I'm bullish. What more do you want me to say? I think we are still very bullish. Now you have a shoulder, a head, right? A shoulder. We got to hash out this correction. And once Bitcoin finds its support, right, in its range, right? Bitcoin is in a range. It's coming down right it's coming back up it needs to find its range once it does that then it can it knows where the resistance is it knows where the support is then it can range within resistance support resistance support and as it oscillates to the upside that's when you can get these big moves to the upside as you oscillate to the downside you can get these corrections to the downside because again when bitcoin was in its distribution phase and its last cycle, that's where a lot of the altcoins decided to moonshot and catch up. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if, like I said, if you can, please, uh, it'd be really helpful if you can leave a like and a comment. And um, the best way to support the channel, I don't do ads or sponsors or I just solely rely on hope, hopeful that I can put enough information out that you can click that subscribe button and uh, and let's continue to grow the channel so I can get more information out there for people and hopefully it helps and everybody can sort of get all the information because that's what it's all about. Knowledge is power. Information is king. Um, and the more information we have, the better we are equipped to making our own personal self-educated decision based on the betterment and of ourselves and our families, putting ourselves in a position of strength. And strength, again, is knowledge, and knowledge is power. And I appreciate all of you guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.